Welcome, everyone, to an exciting evening of Hardin County football. Tonight we have here at Ray Story Field in Radcliffe the homestanding and one and one North Hardin Trojans, coached by Brent Thompson. Visiting tonight, they welcome in the E-Town Panthers. Mark Brown's club comes in at 0-1 off of a bye week last week and suffering a difficult loss in week one to Franklin Simpson. Uh, we've got an exciting night for football. It's beautiful right now. We've had some rain here in Radcliffe and uh, might have a wet field, but conditions are beautiful. The rain has cooled it off, and uh, we're ready for some action here in just a few minutes. Uh, this is Paul Gray here with you tonight. I've got Dan Robbins with me. Dan, what do you expect to see tonight? Well, I, I, you know, with the weather, I think it definitely turns out to be in favor for both of these teams, honestly. They're going to run the ball. They both like to run the ball. And, uh, you know, with, the, with this type of weather, you know, might as well pound it out. It's kind of football I like anyway. Well, certainly E-Town uh, in week one uh, with the heat had some problems with cramping, and they're uh, a smaller ball club. They've got uh, fewer players, and they'll have a lot more guys to platooning. So cool weather is a big deal for them that may give them that fall feel and give them an opportunity to keep their uh, – top players, their starters on the field a little longer. So uh, exciting night of football tonight. Um, Want to, again, as we do every week, uh, start off the evening by thanking our sponsors, people who are supporting Hardin County students. They're supporting Hardin County's uh, television efforts here, and we certainly appreciate uh, all that they do. Uh, Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville online at physicaltherapyky.com. etownapartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Bluegrass Cellular, offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit us at bluegrasscellular.com. Etown Exterminating, 737-6900 online at mugabug.com. And West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. A couple of key points, Dan, tonight. I'm... I'm really interested to see as we watched uh, North Harden last week dominate John Harden 31 to nothing, and it, they really made it clear that they were strong up front. They were going to run the football. But one question I have is: Is can E-Town stand up to the size and the power up front of North Harden? Yeah, I think that's going to be the big test. As we, we see our captains coming out right now, you got big, big, big number 71, Mr. Oxendine out there, and I think I feel like I have to call him Mr. Oxendine. He's he's such a <laughs> he's such a big guy out there, and he's just a junior. Uh, but yeah, he he's obviously is the big presence. He is he is the man up front. Um, but he's got he's got some counterparts right there with him that are just as big. So that will be the test. And I you know I believe that a lot of the battles will be won in the trenches. And uh, if North Size holds up like it did against John Harden, it could be a long night for Etown. But I don't want to paint them into that corner already. Um, definitely got to wait to see how it turns out. But yeah, offensive line, defensive line for North Harden it seems to be um, definitely their A game. Well, that leads you into a second question I wanted to ask you tonight. And uh, that's E-Town coming off of a bye week. I think the, uh, the other question we want to know is, is what kind of adjustments, uh, how uh, much might they have improved having a bye week uh, after the tough loss to, frankly, probably one of the best teams in the state of Kentucky, Franklin Simpson. Uh, what, what do you think uh, Mark Brown might have in store tonight? Well, I think if there's a coach out there that can make those adjustments uh, at any point of the, uh, of the season, especially when a bye week after week one, it's Mark Brown. I mean, obviously he's – He's got a pass that you can see. It's just a reputation where he can uh, build programs and build them up where they need to be. And I think, you know, he's definitely getting to the point there in Elizabethtown, uh, back to where they used to be. And uh, I'm sure that he's made some big adjustments. He's had some time to gobble up some film on North Harden, I'm sure. And uh, I think that he'll have something, something in the bag uh, for, for Coach Thompson and his staff to be ready for. Well, both of these teams uh, really want to focus on the basics and being good at what they do. They're both being probably a 4-4 defensive front uh, trying to have eight men in the box to stop the run they'll play a lot of zone defense on the back end that'll give both teams an opportunity to throw the football we don't know the the wet conditions could affect that we might see issues with shotgun snaps with throwing the football ball handling it looks like the weather's going to be beautiful for the game but the field's wet and uh you can hear maybe in the distance and see trojans are taking the field and the panthers are about to take the field as well um 
it's exciting because we've got these crosstown matchups. Uh, there'll be some games later in the year where our local teams will be taking on visiting out of area teams even next week as PRP comes to Radcliffe here to play North Harden. But tonight, E Town, North Harden. Dan, uh, tell me about E Town, North Harden. Well, you know, we, we got a little history here. Um, it, 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 you know, the rivalry had gone on for so long. 2010 was the last time they played prior to this now going on our four-year stint. You know, back in 2010, North Harden uh, dominated E-Town really 35-8. to eight. Um, And now we've come off this 2015 where they brought the rivalry back, and it's gone back and forth. Um, and as you pointed out earlier in, in our pregame, you know, it looks like the home team has been able to be the favor of that. Uh, but I tell you what, last year, um, Elizabethtown was able to really put it on North Harden, a 50 to 14. He, and, and you know this, uh, Coach, he, scoring 50 points in a high school game, that's, that's, that's a big deal, especially with the, the clock getting to run um, at some points in that. So I, I say that Coach Thompson and his, his staff and his, his boys remember that game, um, though it was a year away. Well, we know that both these teams are different football teams. They're coming here, uh, North Harden off a big win, E-Town off a big loss. E-Town lost a lot of experienced players off that team from last year. We don't really know what we're going to see, Dan, but uh, expectations are high, especially for this North Harden team uh, off of a great week last week. And I know E-Town, um, you know, they, they're expecting to be winners as well. They'll always expect to be winners under Mark Brown. And, uh, you know, a couple big questions as we get set for kickoff here. Darren Green will be kicking off for North Harden. But um, last, uh, you know, last two weeks, North Harden's given up 426 yards of passing offense. And in their first game, E-Town gave up 501 rushing yards. Will the defenses hold up? Well, that's a big question tonight. Yeah, I, I think that uh, they both uh, got into some positions there that they're not very excited about. So I'd say that both staffs were really looking at that to say, how can we fix this? We cannot – you know, give up that many yards to try to be successful in the game. And so here we go. Darren Green kicking it deep. Big hit. North Harden trying to establish some uh, physicality early. Yeah, it looks like that uh, E-Town's going to take the ball here. And really, I mean, not bad field position. I, you know, I think, uh, you know, you take the ball here just, just on the other side of the 20 uh, and, and really a nice position. It will be first and ten, and E-Town's taking the field on offense first. Clay Games will bring his troops to the line. We're in the traditional wing T set with a wide receiver to the left. Hand off to Noah Peeler around the left side off tackle. Decent gain of about three yards. Not bad at all, of course. Uh, who do we see there first? Uh, number 54, uh, Kai Hill from, from North Harden, really setting the edge right there and forcing that run back inside. Kai Hill is their leading tackler with 20 tackles in the first two weeks, and so uh, we'll be expecting to hear his name quite often tonight. It'll be second down, and I'm going to call it seven. It's like North Harden trying to establish some pressure really early. They, they, were, they were stemming up really quick, trying to get some guys to the line of scrimmage. Uh, they are moving to the power side. Motion across for Maj Adams. They're in the shotgun, trips to the right. Flag on the play. Yeah, I felt like that play took a little long. Uh, it looks like we got a little delay of the game. Well, that's a tough mistake coming into uh, a second game of the year. Make that mistake and put yourself behind the sticks. They are going to be about second and 13 now. Second and 13 from their own 24-yard lines. Panthers come to the line. They'll be in their wing tee set. The wing is to the right. Double wing, actually. Motion, no appealer. Play action pass. Ramaj Adams open in the flat. He catches the football. Ball thrown behind. Great catch. Big pickup. I'm sorry, that's Look, Trajan Bradley, yeah. number 16, yeah. catching the football. Bradley on there. We had, we had some pressure coming off the edge. Matt Cole was coming off the edge, um, and, uh, and, and Games was just able to sneak away from him and get that pot pass off. A completion to Trajan Bradley from Clay Games, our first completion. Big completion, third and one from their own 36-yard line. And they'll be under center in a double wing set, two tight ends. Motion deep, handoff straight ahead. Trajan Bradley may have had enough for it, but he's been pushed back quickly. 
Looks like they're going to get a pretty good spot off of this. Uh, and I was kind of wondering if they were going to go up the middle with that against that big defensive line of North Harden. And uh, uh, E-Town was not afraid of that. They were able to pick up that first down. Well, as badly as they were uh, thumped in week one by a great Franklin Simpson team, they put a lot of yards, uh, yards up in that game. They had 229 rushing yards and 366 total in that game. So big game under center clay games. Inside reverse, back to number four, Joe Becker. Big pickup of about six or seven yards. I'll tell you, some nice hard running by Becker. I like his style. He stays low to the ground. His feet just keep churning. I think he broke about three tackles in there. He's an impressive uh, looking kid. He looks like he's got legs coming out of his shoulder pads as well. Uh, you know, his arms are huge. Uh, leaves us about second and four from the 45 yard line. The Panthers will go into the shotgun. We've got two wide to the left. Bradley on the jet sweep. It looks like he's going to be just a little short of the um, first down. It looks like he got about a yard on that carry. Um, the tough part about going east and west on that, you got to get north and south pretty quick when you're running those jet sweeps. Another third and short. They went straight uh, straight ahead right up the middle last time. We've got third and two possibly here. You know, Mark, big play for momentum here. Yeah, big, big play. I, you know, Mark Brown went last play. He ran the... Uh, Ran the guard trap and was able to get it. He wants to think about this one a little bit longer. Yeah, we're already seeing, uh, we're saying big play, and uh, there's a timeout <laughs> so we can uh, make sure we get the uh, right call and uh, hoping to uh, make a big play here. Well, this is an HCEC TV student production division of Hardin County Schools. Special thanks again to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, etownapartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, Etown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. And so while these... Coaches talk it over with their players. Um, good start for the Panthers. Yeah, they, I mean, you know, they started the ball, like I said, about the 23-yard line, and they've moved the ball uh, and keeping North Harden defense on the field. Uh, as you know, uh, you know, coaching defense as well, is you got to get these boys off the field. It's third right now. They've got about a yard, but it's a, it's a big deal right now for North Harden to get off the field right here. Absolutely. You, can't, uh, you just can't let uh, the other team eat up clock. Continue to work. Impressive. Clay Games uh, hits his first pass uh, when they were behind in the sticks. And so they'll come to the uh, line of scrimmage third and two. Looks like a double tight end set, double wing. With Trajan Bradley in the backfield behind Clay. Straight downhill again, and he's broken off the right tackle. He's still moving. Breaking more tackles. Broke two more tackles for about an eight or nine yard gain. Nice, nice play there from Mark Brown. Dials up the nice little off-tackle play. And uh, Bradley definitely made a couple guys miss and uh, did a really good job of keeping his feet moving as well. Dan, it looks like there may be a flag on the play. The officials are having a conversation over there on the sideline. I don't know if that means late hit or uh, what the situation is. Uh, did you see anything over there? I, I did not, but, you know, that's kind of in the vicinity of what you're saying. Some of those times it's a late hit. It looks like we're going to get one of those. Oh, well, we have a personal foul, but it's on E-Town. Uh, so I don't know if there's some extracurriculars over there on the sideline, on their sideline, if maybe one of their blockers was hitting some after the play. That can happen as well as a tackle, late tackle. Yeah, it, you know, sometimes you get over there next to the sideline, and, and I hate to say it, hopefully it wasn't somebody, uh, you know, a little verbal uh, interaction going on, but sometimes you get it from the sideline and not even anybody in the play. All right, tight end to the right, uh, double, uh, double wing formation. They employ their wing T. The hand is to Trajan Bradley up the middle. Not this time. Stacked up. You got a host of Trojans in there. Uh, looks like uh, leading leading the tackle there was. Uh, let me see here. I'm sorry, number 43. Vessi Lilo. Yeah, was in there. I saw him in there as well, Dan, and he was making his presence felt early here. They've got the big defensive tackles in there. Uh, Vessi Lilo and uh, Double O. Octavius Oxendine, so uh, stuffing it up the middle. That'll bring up a second and nine. We're in the shotgun, trips to the left. Play games takes the snap, gives it to Joe Becker. He's looking for space. No space really to be had. Maybe a gain of a yard. It looked like Kai Hill on the tackle again, uh, along with 38. Uh, that's Michael Lunds. Yeah, I, I think that you got to find out where where is Kai Hill on the field at this point, and probably say we need to go away from him because he he is definitely he's got the edge taken care of. Um, so you need to stay away from big number fifty four right now. 
It's going to bring up about a third and seven. Uh, the Panthers are on their own 43 or 44 yard line. Uh, penalty has brought them back. They crossed midfield, but a big third down situation. Shotgun snap to Clay Games. He's looking to the right flat. He was looking for wow. Joe Becker and uh, was well covered and hit him in the hands. He just couldn't hang on. Yeah, really, really nice play, actually. But, you know, 44, Darren Green was there at the same time that the ball got there. So really good coverage um, uh, with, with Darren Green on the play. Well, that brings up a fourth down in uh, play games. The quarterback will also handle the punting duties uh, back in his own territory. Again, the ball is uh, spotted at about the 43-yard line. And North Harden will receive. Looks like it might be Elijah Banks back deep for the Trojans, one of the leading rushers for the Trojans. The punt is up. It's a good punt. It's away. And it's going to bounce and roll out of bounds at about the North Harden 27-yard line where they will take over first and 10. Yeah, North Harden gets their chance now to put their offense on the field and see what they can do. Uh, you know, here we are, seven-minute mark, so not a bad drive by, by Elizabethtown, you know, in the first quarter here. Uh, it, and, you know, being able to put a little something, you know, obviously Mark Brown and their staff are going to go back and say, we're going to take a look at what worked and what didn't and, and see something what comes back on the second drive for them. All right, North Harden in the black uniforms. Uh, trips to the right. Eric Moore, senior quarterback in the shotgun there. He's thrown for three touchdowns in the first two weeks. He'll wait the snap. Lavelle Wright straight ahead. Big stop, big stop by E-Town. I mean, they're, they're right there in the middle of it. We talked about how this game, you know, in the trenches was going to be kind of a big deal, uh, but, a, but a very big stop there. Uh, looks like number 44 was on the tackle, but I, I do not have a name. Uh, 44 is not on the roster, Dan. Uh, big play, but uh, we'll be uh, second and nine. Trojans in the shotgun again, two wide to each side. We've got twins. We have a little screen pass batted up in the air. Woo, no appealer at the... Outside linebacker on the right batted it up in the air and had an opportunity to maybe go catch that. Wow, dangerous, really dangerous play and great athletic play to get up and knock that thing down. Got to be careful when you start going, uh, trying to go side to side with some of these passes. Sometimes those balls get knocked back and it would all depend on where the official is. They could call that ball, you know, a lateral. Third and nine trips to the left. Eric Moore gets the bell right set to his right side for protection. Looking left to the trip side. Deep down the middle of the field looking for uh, Josh Josh Moore, his brother and his uh, most, uh, his favorite target. Uh, Josh has caught 14 passes for 155 yards and three touchdowns in the first two weeks. So looking for a little brother deep down the field. Yeah, you know, and not a bad look. He was he was kind of breaking away a little bit from Looks like he, their feet got tangled up just a bit. But, uh, you know, kudos here to Elizabethtown's defense. They're getting off the field in three plays, uh, and that is a big deal. Quarterback Eric Moore, just like for the Panthers, their quarterback doing the punting duties. Eric Moore back deep in punt formation uh, to take the snap, and that is a big deal because E-Town didn't get a lot of stops against Franklin Simpson two weeks ago, uh, giving up 501 rushing yards. Very rarely got to stop a couple times, but that's a big, big deal for them. Looks like back deep is Joe Becker for the Panthers. High snap, barely handled. Got it away. Beautiful kick. It's a good big. flag on the play here. Something's going to come in. I don't know if there was some holding going on. Big bounce. The Trojans are down in it. I think it's Elijah Banks down in it at the 18-yard line. So we'll have to wait and see what the penalty is. It was coming in. It was coming in as they were as they were coming down the field. It looks like the Elizabethtown guy was uh, blocking the, the gunner here for North Harden, and it looks like that that's where I thought the ref was looking, uh, but I may be off here. Penalty on Elizabethtown. Uh. Have too many men on the field. Looks like maybe they were running one off. That's about the only thing I can think of. I did not see that, Dan, but that makes more sense than anything else uh, from the signal that I saw yeah. uh, the official make. It looks like They're even gonna... after a fantastic punt and getting E-Town back deep, North Harden is going to opt to... Ooh, they're going to they're gonna get take a... over on downs. This is a big uh, personal foul, a 15-yard penalty. On E-Town. It'll be first and 10 at their own 45 yards. 
at their own 45-yard line. The Trojans will take over. Eric Moore with two backs in the backfield. Uh, boy, big mistake for the Panthers after a big stop. Yeah, pretty pretty big one. They got But they got to shake that off, and they got to ready to play defense again. And I think we're going to see an illegal procedure call on the Trojans. Yeah, no, Lord Parton a little excited to get that ball going after getting the first down, getting the ball back. Uh, yeah, this that's a big deal for Elizabeth Town. They got just erase what they've done on that first series. You know, going three and out, make a little mistake, but you just got to get back on the field right now and, and get this ball back. Four wide receivers. It looks like E-Town's gone into a man-to-man -man coverage look with two deep. They're looking for the pass on a first and long yardage, and they have got everything covered except for Lavelle right short over the middle. He breaks a tackle. He's going to pick up about 10 and at least second and five. So uh, E-Town going to a little bit of a different defensive look than what we normally see them do with two deep safeties and man cover. I tell you what, again, you know, give it up to the offensive line there because Eric Moore had all day to find Lavelle coming out of the backfield. Too wide. Maj Adams up the middle on a trap. Nothing there. Yeah, E-Town doing a good job again, stuffing up the middle right now. Uh, looks like they are, they are, I would say they're kind of winning the battle up front at this point. Uh, four wide again, a big third and six play. Another opportunity for uh, E-Town to get back off the field. Two deep, beautiful job by the Trojans in a uh, some sort of a freeze. Uh, where they're using the hard count and they draw E-Town off sides. Yeah, again, you know, you, you've got E-Town, they're, they're ready to go. They're biting at, biting at the, uh, the bit right here and uh, use, use that against them, in that case, uh, with a little hard count. Third and short from E-Town's 46. They're on the opposing team side of the 50-yard line. Moore to take the snap. He's in the shotgun, making an adjustment, maybe checking it off. Lavelle Wright comes to the left. Great downhill to Lavelle right for about six yards in the first down. I'm surprised there, Dan. It looked like they may have jumped early again, but no call. Yeah, I, I, it's, it looks like that the guys are moving just a hair quicker than the ball, uh, and, but they are not making that call right now. But a nice, nice run there up the middle. Lavelle right is a stud, and he's doing a great job with the Trojan team here. Four wide again, Eric Moore in the shotgun. Quick screen. Uh, ball is out. They're calling it down. I tell you what, I can tell from this angle right here, that ball was out before he was down. But, you know, we're not going to get that call out here. There, and there is no instant replay uh, as we get now at, at, at the big leagues. Well, that's uh, Jordan Lovett with the football, number 30 for North Hart. And I believe Joe Becker came over late to try to strip it out. They may have called him uh, his forward progress stopped. It, it was. And, I, you know, Joe Becker was there right at the beginning and did a really good job of sniffing that out. Second and 15 now after the loss. Josh Moore in motion. Quick throw to Josh Moore, but again, no appealer. His second <laughs> batted down pass playing at defensive end or outside linebacker there. No appealer making a big play. You know, we don't we don't have their their, their height and weight here, but I'm just kind of looking at no appealer, and I'm saying he's playing defensive end. I don't think I'm throwing over top of him. <laughs> well, he's uh, getting great extension and knocking the ball down. A big third and 15 for the Panthers here, trying to stop the Trojans in their own end of the field. The snap, looking down the field, lots of time. A deep throw down the middle, Josh Moore wide open at the post, touchdown Trojans. Again, you know, Paul, I think that just, I guess I chalked that up for a win for the offensive line because they gave Eric all the time he wanted, and, and here came Josh. Josh was going to work himself to get open, and when you have that much time, that, that's deadly for a defensive back. It looks like uh, the front four of the Panthers is not getting much of a rush. He's going to have – coach is going to have to consider another way maybe to get a little bit of pressure on Eric Moore. They may see a lot of that. You know that two deep coverage there right down between the safeties is where they hit that and a uh, great play. So uh, Darren Green will be there to try the point after. Sneaks through the left upright. It was a little bit of a squibber and a little left, but it sneaks through. Well – you know, it took a little bit of time. We, we kind of stayed right here in the middle of the field a little bit, uh, but, but North Harden was able to put it in the end zone. Tune in again weekly 
for great broadcasts of all local HCEC TV programs on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable Channel 2 and Spectrum Communications on Channel 184. Special thanks to our HCEC TV crew, uh, the young people, the young men and women of Hardin County Schools, our students that are producing this program this evening. Uh, we're super thankful for their hard work and uh, appreciate all that they do. Well, we've got one on the board. It's 7 nothing. North Harden Trojans. They'll be kicking off. And we'll see the E-Town Panthers on offense for the second time this evening. Looked like that was about a 45-yard strike. 45-yard uh, pass. That's right, Dave. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. You, you find your brother out there wide open. That's something they can talk about when they get home for sure. Dan, that's their fourth <laughs> connection for touchdown in this young football season. Darren Green kicking off. Deep, number 17, Love Grimes. Fields muffed it originally, picks it up. Found a hole, but dragged down at about the 33-yard line. I tell you what, he, he was about a tackle or two uh, from breaking that, and he had a lane. He had popped it through the, the initial wave of the kickoff team, but uh, they got a hold of him and were able to drag him down. First and ten Panthers from the 32-yard line on their side of the football field. Clay Games will bring his troops to the line of scrimmage again. He'll be under center this time. We've got, uh, again, double wing formation, tight end to the right, deep motion, no appealer. Toss sweep to Peeler, and they've got a lot of space out here. Great job, about a 14-yard pickup. Uh, number five uh, out in front for Cam E-Town. Camden Williams with a nice block out here on the edge. Nice play, getting getting uh, getting Mr. Peeler involved on offense here a little bit uh, as he makes that big run and he's he's going off the side now. But uh, nice little weapon. Well, Noah was their leading receiver uh, in week one, but didn't see but four uh, carries, so uh, they they hand him the ball a little less frequently. So we got trips left into the boundary. Games double handoff reverse. Trajan Bradley, they've got it sniffed out and in the backfield. He's being dragged down for about a two-yard loss. Uh, they handed it to Joe Becker and then back uh, to Trajan Bradley. I like that old uh, counter crisscross play uh, with their handing that ball off. It's, it's a little scary. It's a little scary back there when you call that play because you've got to make sure that your guys get that connection. Uh, and they did a really good job. I tell you what, that, that play could have been a little more disastrous. Uh, guess who was there? Kai, Kai was there, <laughs> number Kai big number Hill. fifty. Kai Hill, Hill number fifty four was still chasing it down, and he almost had him in the backfield. We'll have a tight end left, double wing formation now in the shotgun. Two receivers to the right. Bradley in motion to the right. Games looking down the field, nearly picked off. Dangerous throw up the right sideline. Looks like he was. Uh, who was that? It was. Uh, it was. It was Peeler that it was, he was looking to connect with, and he just, just a little bit, just a little bit over Peeler, and that's hard to overthrow, overthrow him. But uh, Peeler was still coming out of sideline, um, and just probably just a little bit beyond his reach. It was 24. Lorenzo Lovejoy in coverage had a, had an opportunity. Ball was just a little over his head as well. Had an opportunity for an interception. Well, it leaves us third and 11 here uh, on the four, their own 44-yard line. We've got uh, four wides, two to each side. Game's back, looking for a screen. And Octavius Oxendine sniffed that out. He had tackled Love Grimes before the ball even got there. He he saw what I saw, which is an offensive line that wasn't blocking anybody, trying to bait the defensive line in for a screen, and he had nothing. He, he had nothing. I, and I tell you, that. and I tell you what, I, I feel bad there for for Mr. Grimes on that play because uh, Oxendine had a hold of him, and uh, I thought he was getting ready. He, he looked like he was going to rip his arm off. I thought um, they might toss him back over on the sideline. There, there is a bit of size difference between the two. <laughs> uh, game's back deep to punt. Looking to receive. It appears to be Elijah Banks back for the Trojans. Punt is away. It's a low punt. Banks has got plenty of room to field and return. Yeah. Really good job there. Looked like number 11, Calvin Griffin, uh, the senior from E-Town on the stop. Good coverage. And we've got an Elizabethtown Panther down on the field uh, on about the 32-yard line. I cannot tell who that is. I think it's number 54, Gavin Cross, I believe, is who we've got down on the field. 
uh, for the Panthers. I didn't see what happened, but that's in the area of where they were, uh, you know, making the tackle uh, where the punt was uh, fielded and, and run back. I tell you, it's really good. I, I, I hate to, that we have to have them come out, but I really appreciate, you know, our, our sports medicine staff from Hardin Memorial Hospital uh, being able to get out there quickly. It looks like we got, we got two staff here, uh, one, one for each sideline tonight. I hate to see the young man down, but he's getting the best attention, and uh, hopefully he'll be fine. Well, while we've just got a moment here, uh, again, we'll, we'll remind you again, this is an HCC TV student production, a division of Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, eTown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Well, they are uh, escorting, uh, again, number, 50, uh, number 54, Gavin Cross, off the field. And it uh, appears as though he's going to be okay. He's a little shaken up. And hopefully he's able to get back in. He looked like he's, he's a little, little uh, light on his feet. Uh, must be maybe a knee, maybe an ankle. He's shaken up. Uh, first and ten, uh, Trojans on their own 33-yard line. They'll take over. Eric Moore, the senior quarterback, are ready to go for their second possession. Four wide receivers, two to each side. He's got Banks on his right, and he, he'll give to Banks around left end. Banks makes two defenders miss. It looks like a pickup of four yards. we got a flag now. Ben. Yeah, we got another flag. It looks like, well, they moved. It was in the backfield. They've kind of moved it up near the line of scrimmage, uh, typically in the, in the vicinity of a hold call. Well, it looked like the uh, you know, stretch play to the left and sweep or stretch play to the left. And <laughs> whenever you're out on the edge and you got big guys trying to block, a lot of times they tend to get their arms out there and grab a hold of somebody. Like, uh, looks like uh, Banks is trying to add to his, uh, his big yardage from last week, you know, able to put up uh, about 75 yards last week. So he wants to get in this game. I think well, that's first, his first carry of the night, right? Paul? It is. Yeah. Well, now we're set up at uh, first and 20 for the Trojans. Again, four wide. Banks to the right. Moore taking the snap. Looking to his left. Back to his right. Down the middle. Marcus Harris on a seam route. He's got the safeties beat. He split the safeties again. Touchdown, Trojans. What a, what a nice, nice play. And a, I mean, a beautiful strike. Almost perfect from Eric Moore to him. And what a big, big touchdown here early, or really late in the first half to put themselves up uh, 13 to nothing. Well, that's Marcus Harris. Uh, he had, um, he's had two catches for 15 yards in the previous two weeks, but he just added 72 yards and a touchdown to his total there. And Dan, interestingly enough, two times split in the safety straight down the middle of the field. The first one on a post pattern, the second one to the uh, slot receiver up the seam. They're going to have to, the Panthers are going to have to figure that out. Oh, Boss snap right under through the hands of Eric Moore, and they'll down that. And, uh, well, we've got a PAT, a muff PAT, and you never know what's going to happen because of a muff PAT. No, I, I tell you what, special teams play a big part of the game. You know, it is a major component. It's not just about the offense and the defense, but, you know, the special teams can come back to bite you. And, and right now the Trojans got to hope that that does not come back on them later. Well, low snap. Um, it was not a very good snap. It was along the ground. Eric Moore couldn't handle it. Uh, wet conditions may have had something to do with it. Uh, they never got an opportunity to handle the ball or get it on the tee there. So, uh, fantastic uh, first quarter for the Trojans offensively and defensively. 13-0, uh, 38.2 seconds to go in the first quarter. And uh, all Trojans so far here at Ray Story Field. And I'm not sure um, what, what our viewers can see from home, but, uh, you know, as the sun is starting to set here, we only have one set of lights right now on the home side. And, uh, you know, I wonder what that's going to play into uh, this game uh, with, with only one set of lights. As it starts to get dark, it could get a little uh, difficult to see the football, especially in the passing game. Could get a little difficult for us to see what's going on on the field. There could be some pockets where it's a little dark and uh, shadowy out there, but we'll bring you the action the best we can with our great – HCEC student crew led by Dale Mings. Um, very appreciative of those guys. Darren Green to kick. Kick taken. Good run back. Not not bad. You're going to get these 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 little high kicks uh, to about the second line. And uh, if you can pick up 10, 
because uh, they're on you pretty quick. That's not bad at all. So get you know, Etown's going to start off right here with some pretty good field position. Uh, they did that a lot last week. Uh, North Harden, uh, Darren Green kicking, trying to kick to the less dangerous up backs and not kick it deep uh, to the guys who can take it all the way. First and ten for the Etown Panthers on their own 37-yard line. Under center, one back, tight end right. Peeler in motion, quick sweep pitch again. They got 12 yards on that last time. Big pickup, great cut, great stiff arm, breaking tackles. Another 13, 14-yard game for Noah Peeler. I tell you what, I'm going to point out here something. Uh, Becker made a fantastic block on, on Kai Hill there to really be able to open that up for Noah to get around that edge. And then Noah just muscled him with his way through that for the last couple of yards. physical run. He made a couple nice cuts. He threw somebody on the ground with a stiff arm. Uh, that's highlight real stuff. Maybe they'll see that at their banquet at the end of the yeah. year. That was pretty nice. First and 10 now on the other side of the 50 on the Trojan 49-yard line. Double wing formation. They're looking for the crisscross trap again. Becker couldn't hand off because there was penetration. What an amazing job to pick up five yards on that. Uh, unreal that he was able to do that. That play was about a five-yard loss. Uh, looks like... Uh, let me see who was it. looked like number 38 from North Harden was That's in. Michael Lund. Yeah, he was in the backfield and, and, and was there, missed the tackle, and then sped ahead and was able to catch Becker and to, to finish off the tackle finally. And as you noted before, anytime you're going east and west and there's penetration, it can be a big play for the defense. But somehow uh, Joe Becker, he didn't hand the ball off. I think he was supposed to hand the ball off, and he held on to it and made, uh, made something out of nothing. Yeah, it definitely looks like they've made some type of adjustment here. With I, I see Peeler lining up, lining up in the wing uh, several times, and so he was coming. It looks like to pick that ball. Looked like it was the, the crisscross play coming back our way. Uh, but uh, they definitely made some adjustments and getting Peeler involved in the run game a little more. Yeah, some people call that the crisscross trap. It's called scissors. Uh, but basically, we're just talking about a double handoff. You give to one, and, and it's different from the reverse you see because reverse is happening deep in the backfield, behind the quarterback, and this is happening close to the line of scrimmage where you're trying to cut it up inside usually of a trap block. Yeah, and, and, the, and the thing about that, it's happening really tight inside there, but you actually got two guys. You have, you have an offensive lineman and a tight end often that are pulling inside there to kind of help set that up. All right, second, and it looks like five. Uh, again, E-Town is uh, on the Trojan 44-yard line under center, two wings, uh, tight end left. Trajan Bradley in the backfield. Joe Becker on the jet sweep, taking the handoff. Running through tacklers. He just ran through Jerome McKinney's tackle. Pick up a first down, about eight or nine yard gain. Another nice run by Becker. I tell you, I, I, more and more I watch the kid, I really like his running style. He's hard-nosed. He gets it upfield quickly. And he and not there's no one guy out there right now, maybe unless it was Oxendine, that's going to bring him down. <laughs> I might want to stay away from him. Uh, he tried to throw Love Grimes off the field a little while ago. <laughs> First and ten now for the Panthers. Uh, they're on the 33-yard line of the Trojans. Um, we've got the traditional wing tee set to the right. Fake buck sweep. we got Trajan Bradley in the flat wide open. Michael Lunds was in coverage, but slightly overthrown. Uh, looked like it was going to be a five- to eight-yard gain, and uh, now we're going to be second and ten for the Panthers. One of the difficult parts, that, that play right there is, is the waggle. Uh, one of the difficult parts is you do have an offensive lineman that's pulling out to kind of lead the way so he does have the option if he has to take off and run. Um, Clay was so quick to get out there that he almost kind of outran his, his coverage a little bit, his protection. And, again, as we talked about last week a couple times with Clay, he's running to his left, a right-handed quarterback, trying to make that throw. That's a really tough throw, and he had trouble with that last week as well. All right, second and ten now. Uh, shotgun formation. Too wide. We've got two guards pulling the lead. Good pickup. Really, really nice run there. Uh, that was, uh, let's see, it was number 21 uh, for Elizabethtown on the carry. And uh, I, I don't have a 21 on our roster. They they must be switching up a little bit going into their whites. Uh, where they've, they've changed a few numbers. They even changed Camden Williams. He had been in 23. He's in, I believe, five tonight. So we got a couple of guys who are uh, in some different jersey numbers, and we may have a hard time spotting a few of them. All right, we're at third and three now. Big down. Wing T formation to right. Quick give. Number six, Trajan Bradley. He'll pick up the first down easily. Just kind of an off-tackle give. You know, a really, really impressive start to this second quarter here at Elizabethtown. They are definitely moving the ball, and, and they're taking it right to North Harden. Dan, this happened against Franklin Simpson last week. They got down two scores. 
and the offense, there was a spark somehow uh, under the offense. I think they need to figure out how to get that spark at the beginning of a ball game. But um, you know, they were able to come back and cut a deficit twice last uh, in their last game. Well, here we are, first and ten from about the 18-yard line. Give again to Trajan Bradley straight ahead. He's the workhorse. It looks like a gain of about four or five. Yeah, another nice run again by them. They're you know, putting the ball here. They're going to be inside. Yeah, it looks like they are inside the 15 at this point. And so when you get down in this red zone, it de definitely tightens up uh, on, on some of their options for the for the run and or pass. Looked like uh, number 43, Bessie Lilo, on the stop. We have, uh, again, the big defensive tackles trying to make plays inside. It looks like uh, Octavius Oxendine's off the field for a rest right now. There's a whistle on the play, flag down. It looks like we're going to have motion uh, false start on the, on the Panthers. That's a, that's a tough tough break. Right, and it's a, it's, I don't know if the whistle um, uh, bothered our, our guy receiving the pitch here, number 21, I guess. He's, he's the unnamed back at this point, but um, the ball was pitched a little bit behind him, and, and he almost kind of you know dropped it, but it went behind him. That, that could have been disastrous for Elizabethtown. Absolutely. So they go from second and four to second and nine now. Uh, they're now, uh, the ball's resting, I believe, on about the uh, 18 yard, 17 or 18 yard line of the Trojans. They'll be in the shotgun. We've got two wide receivers to the right, two wide receivers to the left. Snap, rolling to the left. Clay Games, he's got space if he wants it, but he's going to throw. He's found his receiver on the left side there. That's going to be number five. That's Camden Williams with a, with a big catch over there on the left sideline. Well, it looks like that he was out of bounds on that, Paul. So I thought it was a big catch as well, but I looked at the refs that motioned him that he was okay. out of bounds on that catch. I saw a nice little toe dance, but they, uh, they're they saying he did not stay in bounds, keep his feet in bounds over there on the far sideline. It's going to leave a tough third and nine. That's difficult because not only to have an open receiver, but Clay looked like he had uh, six or eight yards of open green grass if he wanted it. So they'll end up third and nine. Yeah, big third and nine right here. Uh, you know, they're still inside the red zone. I'm not sure what their kicking game looks like at this point, but you're down 13 to nothing. You really need six on the board. Again, they'll come to the uh, line shotgun formation. Trips to the left, sprinting to the left into the short side of the field again. Looking down the field to throw. This, this is a catch, and it's going to be really close at this point to the first down. We lost the stick because it was so close to the sideline. Not sure if they're going to measure this or not, if it's close enough. Yeah, yeah they better measure this. That was, the ball is right over by the sticks. It's not going to be <laughs> difficult to get the measurement. I didn't see over there on the far side who caught the ball. I'm not sure if it was Camden Williams or if it was uh, one of the other E-Town Panthers. Uh, number three, Jamon Bristol, was on the field. I'm not sure uh, who was uh, on the reception. Yeah, it was hard for me to tell from this angle, and, and I'll be honest, Paul, the, the light on that side is it's starting to bother me it a little bit. It's starting to give us trouble, isn't it? But I can tell you right now that I can tell that Mark Brown is, is not even wavering whether it's a first down or not. He's got his offense still on the field. Well, Dan, just a little side note for you here. If you look up in the distance, we've got a nice little rainbow going here. Uh, I don't know if that's a good omen for the home team or what that <laughs> It's It's hard to say. Uh, it, it, is, it is a nice little sight. Again, it is, it is a beautiful evening out right now. It'd be nice to be playing football right now, wouldn't it, Dan? I, I, I can't believe it's, you know, it's the end of August here, and, and we're out here with this type of weather. Um, I, I can't remember the last time in, in August it was like this. Man, low 70s tonight. Uh, we expect it to be in the high 80s and guys to be struggling. Big fourth and one under center clay game. That oh was a bobble. My goodness. A disaster strike. It was a bobbled snap, Paul. It was a bobbled snap. And I tell you what, I think they were going to get the first down, but he was not able to make it. Um, it looked like they were going to run a little just off, off, the, off the center, and he bobbled it. Uh, bad exchange. Bad exchange. 38, Michael Lunds is there to make a play again. Um, it looked like also it was number 59 there um, for the Trojans, but. Yeah, he was trying to reverse out and hand the ball to the fullback, and he couldn't get all the way around. He couldn't handle the snap. So we've seen maybe the wet conditions rise up and rear their ugly head already. First and ten for the Trojans now in their own end. Shotgun Eric Moore again looking to his left. Handing now up the middle. Breaking it out to the left side. Looks like Elijah Banks, and he'll be stuffed at about the line of scrimmage there. 
And it looks like I got uh, number 50, Dylan Miller, if I see that number correctly on the tackle. Trojans are going to be quickly back to work. We saw the Panthers moving at a little bit more of a deliberate pace on offense, but the, uh, but the Trojans will be at the line of scrimmage and ready to go again already. Banks to the right of Moore. Four wide receivers. Adams in motion. He'll take the quick toss ahead. Big sweep play around the right side. Jet sweep. Really, really nice play, and you have Camden Williams there to force him out of bounds. Uh, but he was running out of room anyway toward on the edge. Well, about a 16 to 18 yard pickup somewhere in there. Big, big play. First down and 10. Trojans are going to get out of their own end zone now. Uh, they're on about their own 29 yard line. First and 10. Again, Eric Moore in the shotgun. We've got four wides, two to each side. Taking the snap, it'll be Banks straight ahead up the middle. Nice cut to the right. He's found open space. Breaks another tackle. Two tacklers. No appealer in pursuit. Smacking at the ball. He'll bring him down at the 30-yard line. A big gain of about 40 yards. A great athleticism by Noah Peeler to catch, to catch him on that play. You know, I thought Banks may have been gone, uh, but Noah is coming up and, and, and looking like he was trying to make a strip on the ball. Luckily, he was able to bring him down. Well, we got Joe Becker down. He's uh, getting off the field slowly here, but he's jogging it off. So it looks like Joe's going to be fine for the Elizabethtown defense. But, again, the Trojans, the, the – the chains aren't even set. The Trojans are about ready to snap the ball again. They're trying to up the tempo here. Lavelle right in the backfield now for Elijah Banks. Checking in. Ramaj Bradley taking again the quick jet toss straight ahead and another big play for about six yards. A little, little different play there. You're running it out of the jet where, where uh, Moore catches that ball and just kind of flings it right back at him on the jet motion. Um, personally, a little dangerous in my mind, but if they've been practicing and it makes it work for them, then you know, by all means. Again, four wide. They haven't been going to the trips formation much. Been four wides pretty much the whole game for the Trojans. We've got a flag down. False start. I, I don't. I don't even know if they were set. I, I was. I was a little confused that they were calling the false start. Well, right? I saw the uh, the center react, and I think he may have done something with the football. Okay. So second and ten instead of second and five. Four wide, second and ten now. Back, I believe it's Lavelle right behind uh, Eric Moore. In a pistol look, he's going to come to the left side now of the quarterback. Snap a little low, but handled easily. Looking deep down the down the middle of the field again. But this time it's Love Grimes there to make the pick. Yeah, nice. They night. tried to go to Josh Moore again, Dan. They were going to Josh Moore, but I tell you what, Love Grimes was in position, and he read that the entire way and was able just to step right into that ball. Big interception for the Panthers. I'm telling you, they uh, they got beat down the middle of the field twice and uh, did not make the same mistake. The safeties, I guess, have been probably getting an earful from the coach on the sideline made a big play. Yeah, I'd say the coaches probably talked to him a little bit about that and yeah. making sure that that did not happen again. But, uh, you know, you have the old adage, we're going to keep doing it until you can stop us, and, uh, and that's what North Harden was doing there. To me, it looked like, Dan, that uh, Eric Moore there in the uh, shotgun, he was staring it down, down the middle of the field. He had uh, his receiver up the left sideline wide open. I think the safety was sitting on that seam route. First and 10 now from the 20-yard lines for the Panthers. Trajan Bradley in motion deep. Inside handoff to number 21 for the Panthers. And he's going to have a nice little pickup of four or five yards. Yeah, I really hate that we don't have a, a jersey on him because uh, he's, he's already been carried. He's carried the ball several times. I'm kind of wondering here a little bit if I, I look down from their stat sheet. I'm wondering if that's Cameron McNeil that wore 26 in previous games. Uh, I, I'm just kind of wondering because he's the next guy on their charts with, with carries outside of uh, the other gentleman. I think you're probably right. Cameron had uh, four carries for 17 yards in week one against Franklin Simpson. Likely to be Cameron McNeil uh, in his away white jersey. Inside handoff to Joe Becker. Good cut back to his left. Breaks a couple tackles. That's a first down, a nine-yard gain. A really good job of Becker just seeing the field, uh, you know, making that run and just looking back and seeing what, what it gave him. Um, got, that's where you got to pursue. You know, the defensive, the defensive guys got to pursue down the line because those cutback lanes are going to be there um, otherwise. Looks like a little inside zone play, and he, uh, he found the cutback lane. First and 10, uh, they're on their own 34-yard line. The Panthers uh, under center, double wing, tight end left. Looking straight ahead, Trajan Bradley. He's trying to bounce it outside. 
And he's trying to win the foot race. Darren Green in pursuit, and he'll throw him out of bounds. And uh, a little extra contact uh, outside, but uh, everybody's heading back to their huddle. Looks like, unfortunately, there for, for uh, a Trojan on the sideline was able to take the, the stop, um, um, and he took it full force. And Boys, some, you got to pay attention gotta, on the sideline. you got to pay attention because there is a game going on. You get run down in a hurry. All right, that was uh, interesting there. Okay. Well, that's a big uh, four-yard gain. It's second and six for the Panthers. They'll come to the line of scrimmage again. We'll be in the shotgun this time, and play games is back there. Trips to the left. Becker to the left, looking to protect. Rolling to the left. Again, number five, Camden Williams. It looks like he's on the catch and has a first down. Yeah, really nice play again. Uh, e e that's been uh, really their favorite pass play. Again, running that, that, that waggle route, and uh, North Harden is just is, is giving them. I mean, they're giving it to him, so might as well keep taking it. Dan, I'm, I'm seeing a pattern here. They're trying to throw to the left side. They like Lorenzo Lovejoy trying to throw at him. Ian Patrick down here hasn't seen any action, and he was great last week against John Hard. So they are trying to avoid Ian Patrick down here on the bottom side of the field. Draw play. Joe Becker up the middle. He's broken two tackles. He's loose up the left sideline. They've got two men to beat, breaking more tackles, and he'll be brought down at about the 10-yard line. Really, really nice run there by Becker showing his speed as he got past those linebackers and it was just a foot race to the end. Luckily, uh, North Harden's defensive backs on the backside were able to catch up to him. Well, pursuit and pursuit angles are so important, Dan, and um, they, uh, they were able to stop him from scoring. It looked like he had an opportunity there to score, but great run. He broke two or three tackles. Yeah, really nice run. Really the best play that E-Town's had tonight. Love his physicality. All right, first and ten. From about the 11 or 12 yard line, the Panthers uh, inside deep, deep in Trojan territory. Under center, Clay Games. Motion McNeil, it appears. Toss right. Great block by Williams on the outside. He, he got in. Touchdown. Uh, hey, that's the second. That's the second stock block we saw. You know, from one of our, our receivers out here making a nice block, and this one results in a touchdown. And you know, way to capitalize on the turnover. Man, you know, that, that's a big part of the game. And, you know, with E-Town being able to turn the ball over, get the ball, you know, on an interception in the end zone and put the ball for six on the other side, that's a big deal. Well, they're about to go down three scores, and now they're down one. All right. Big play there. As you said, great blocking. Brandon Parsons, kicker for E-Town Panthers, will get his first work tonight. Lined up for the PAT. Snap, hold. Looks good. Parsons will uh, bring the uh, Panthers within six points, 13-7, 5-10 to go in the second quarter. Wow, again, I, I just, I, you know, you can't, uh, you can't hype it up enough, you know, how big of a deal it is that you got you to gotta take care of the football and uh, just that one little misstep by North Harden where they were looking to go up three scores, um, throwing that ball in the same spot that they've done the previous two. And, uh, and here E-Town is take the ball, I mean, taking the ball 80 yards uh, to put six on the board, or seven rather now. Uh, what, that's a big deal at the 5-10 mark here. Well, 5-10 to go in the half. And uh, let me just again remind us, this is an ACT, ECTV student production at Division of Hardin County Schools. I uh, want to thank our sponsors, Physical Therapy Associates. More personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. etownapartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. And Bluegrass Cellular, offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit us at bluegrasscellular.com. And so we see Brandon Parsons. Dan, he's uh, preparing uh, to kick off here from the 40-yard line. Just, just a little update for others that are uh, watching us. Um, I do see that the Central Harden... Uh, Christian Academy Louisville game has not started yet due to lightning. Wow. Looks like 21 Elijah Banks with the return. He's got a decent return. Looks like he's going to get it back to about the 27-yard line where the Trojans will take over first and 10. Another little score update. Uh, looks like Meade County is leading Shelby County at this time right now, 15 to nothing. And uh, we also have, uh, like I said, uh, the, the central game that's on delay. And looks like LaRue is up 8-0 uh, right now over Thomas Nelson. Okay, big. Big game for LaRue County. Eric Moore in the shotgun again, four wide receivers. 
Looks like he's got Elijah Banks in the backfield with him to his left. He's handing off up inside to Banks. Big tackle inside. It's like uh, number 20, Jeremiah Vey uh, for E-Town on the big stop there. It's a big possession here for, for North Harden. Can they answer back before half? A lot of times momentum going into halftime makes a big difference. So here we are, second and about six. Inside handoff again. They're going back, then it's bounced outside. Banks, but nothing doing there. Number uh, 21, that may be uh, McNeil. I'm guessing that's Cameron McNeil uh, yeah. on the tackle. If it's not, Cameron's getting a lot of airtime here. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks like another big stop uh, to keep from from being a big play there, and brings up that third and third and six. Trojans have the ball on their 32-yard line in shotgun formation, faking the toss, the jet sweep again, and the pass deep down the sideline. To number 30, Jordan Lovin, is just slightly overthrown. Yeah, and you know what? It's 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 nice for Eric Moore to look back in the direction of uh, of Love Grimes. Uh, sometimes quarterbacks will shy away from going back to that guy that just picked them off. Uh, but it was actually, again, really good coverage by Love Grimes on that play. So uh, they fake the uh, jet sweep to Ramaj Adams, which they've been running very effectively, and then try to take a shot down the field. Nothing there. Great coverage, and uh, they'll be in punt formation. So the Panthers, with 3.52 to remain in the first half, will have an opportunity here maybe to come down and take the lead. It looks like we got, uh, got a flag on the play here. Yeah, it is a pretty big deal. That's a lot of time on the clock for Mark Brown and his staff to put something together before halftime. These mental errors, you, you would hope, you know, for North Harden being in their third game. I know it's only the second for Elizabethtown, but... Uh, you got you to eliminate these mental errors right now. Well, that makes it fourth and 11, just backs them up a little more. It's going to give E-Town better field position even than what they were going to get already. Again, Eric Moore in uh, punt formation. Signals being called. Punt is away. It looks like a good punt, spiraling punt, caught by Joe Becker. He's up the middle. He's breaking three tackles. Got an opportunity up the left sideline. One block, and he may have a score. Oh, man, great play. Very, very nice open field tackle that's there. Six, that's from Maj Adams yeah. making the play to stop the touchdown. Joe Becker had all kinds of space. He spun out of two tackles and had an opportunity to go the distance. Yeah, great. Again, we're seeing you know Joe really kind of you know offensively. We see him on defense doing some things, and they're in a special teams game. Um, he he is a, a dynamite player to watch. He's been one of the most versatile guys, being a guy who. Uh, has run the ball a lot and caught the football for him, so he's a dual threat for them on offense. Trips to the right now, first and 10 for the Panthers from about the 38-yard line. Screen pass to the right, Camden Williams on the catch. He's got a lot of room up the middle, cutting it back left, up the left sideline. He's going to take it the distance. 36-yard touchdown, Camden Williams. You know, I talked about having four minutes, and just under four minutes on the clock, but uh, they didn't need that. Well, they needed about 30 seconds is what they <laughs> needed there. Uh, a big uh, punt return and uh, a little screen pass. Uh, that's why when you see all these screen passes thrown, uh, you figure out why when uh, big plays happen. You know, and he caught the ball here uh, on our side and, and was able to cut all the way back across the field and, and to, the, to his sideline to make that touchdown. Brandon Parsons on for the uh, point after. Snap, hold, it's up, wide right. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Tie ball game, 13 all with 317 to go. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when you're breaking it all the way back across the field on, on a play like that, Dan, it's a little over pursued by the defense. They get a little ahead of themselves and uh, they get past the football. Yeah, it, it, you know, that, that definitely looked like that was part of it. Uh, Camden Williams just turned his jets on as well and uh, just able to outrun um, a lot of uh, North Harden players in pursuit. Um, and you don't see that happen a lot of times where, where people are outrunning some North Harden players. Well, we expected a good football game early. It looked like the Trojans would uh, pull away and maybe put this game away. But we're tied up, 13 all. Uh, three minutes to go in the half, and uh, the Trojans will get the ball back. I'll uh, just note quickly again, uh, one of our sponsors, E-Town Exterminating, 737-6900, online at mugabug.com, West Point Bank. has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, 
and West Point or find us online at westpointbank.com. Brandon Parsons back to do the kicking. Uh, after missing the extra point, he'll uh, try to pin the Trojans back deep. And it is a pretty deep kick. Field by 21, Elijah Banks again. He's getting a lot of duty on, the, on these special teams. Good run around the right side, and they'll be set up again on about their own 32-yard line. We've got three minutes left to go before the half. Uh, again, I think North Harden has to be a little careful here not to give the ball back to Elizabeth Town with too much time on the clock. So they really need to put something together um, and, and see if they can get some more points on the board. I think they need first downs at this point and need to move the football, and so they'll take over. Maybe it's the 33-yard line that they've got the football on their own end of the field. Trips to the left. We haven't seen a lot of trips formation, but here it is. Eric Moore with Elijah Banks. Actually, Lavelle Wright with the ball here. Sweep around the left side. Physical punishing run at the end of the run for a 15-yard pickup. Really a, really a nice run there by Lavelle. Uh, he turns this corner. I really, I love to see how he, he's got that ball pulled in real tight. He's holding on to it, making sure that there is no chance for a, for a fumble on a play. Good ball security there by Lavelle Wright. He'll be to the right side of quarterback Eric Moore. Trips to the left into the short side of the field this time. Three deep coverage look. Handoff straight ahead to Lavelle Wright. He's looking for a hole, and he finds it back to the right-hand side for about a seven-yard gain. Got another, another nice play here for the Trojans. I really like that they're keeping the ball on the ground here, you know, go, go, trying to go into halftime. Uh, but I don't think they're satisfied with going to the halftime tied 13-13 at this point. Well, I think that shows no panic. Uh, they're going to stick with their game plan and run the football. So second and three. Four wide receivers again. Lavelle right to the right side of the quarterback. Maj Adams on the jet sweep again. A little toss to Adams. He's cutting it back. He's got a first down. And he's oh. breaking more tackles up the right sideline. Wow, a really nice run, breaking a couple of tackles and able to get down the field a little bit and pull this ball within the red zone here. Uh, looked like, uh, was it uh, Love Grimes, number 17 on the tackle? Well, it may have been 12, Jackson Curto. I'm not sure, but uh, 12, Jackson Curto's back there at uh, safety as well. Uh, Love Grimes at the corner position, but big tackle to save, uh, save a touchdown there. All right, four wides again. Handoff straight ahead. Lavelle Wright dragging defenders. Another nice run. I love, I love it that you just come right back in between the tackles and just play that hard-nosed football. Well, uh, Dan, they just brought uh, Octavius Oxendine, the big defensive tackle, in at left tackle. Uh, I would be looking maybe for them to run the football behind the big fella. Oh, yeah. I, th that he is definitely a presence out there, and uh, I, that would be the guy that I would like to run behind uh, if I was ever running the ball. But uh, I would not run the ball, obviously, Paul. So, uh, you run the football, Dan? Oh no, maybe maybe when I was younger, uh, before before I got a little bit too big. Uh, well, one of the uh, hardworking offensive linemen for the Trojans who's been doing a good job. It seems like they maybe are starting to win line of scrimmage. Uh, that's number 73, Pulau uh, Tua is the one that was coming out as uh, Octavius Oxendine, double O, is checking in. Um, we've got a timeout. It's and, a, uh, we've got it's a, it's a timely one for sure because North Harden is definitely building up some momentum. So, you know, Mark Brown wants to talk it over with the guys a little bit and, you know, tell them, hey, let, let's relax here a little bit. Uh, you can bend, but let's not break. Uh, I think right now they'd be pretty happy if they could at least hold North Harden just to three. Looks like we got first and goal from the seven-yard line. Again, four wide. They've, they've shown a lot of... Um, Tendency to throw jump balls to 80 Josh Moore, but it doesn't look like they've got a great position with him on the right side to do that here. Love it is wide left, handing straight ahead to right, and he's running over defenders and into the end zone. The ball right, touchdown, Trojan. Well, Paul, I thought he was down in the backfield, and uh, no, he was not. He he kept turning. Uh, you made mention a little bit about maybe throwing the ball. There's no way in the world that I would be calling a throw and play down here at the line of scrimmage when you when your big horses are running like they've been doing. Well, uh, they didn't throw the football on that drive, and um, again, we've we've seen how they are trying. North Harden's trying to establish the running game this year, and uh, they went back to it right there after a couple of uh, tough series. Darren Green for the kick. It's up and it's good, and that'll make it uh, 20 to 13. Trojans with 132 to go in the half. Right, really, really nice drive again. You know, 
with, with just a few minutes left on the clock, North, North Harden able to put something together and, and take a nice 20-13 uh, to 13 lead with 132 before halftime. But it's, it is a game of momentum, um, and that could be enough time for Mark Brown to put something together before they go in. Well, momentum has swung back and forth. You really, as darkness is falling here, you really can see uh, the shadows, the shade uh, on the far sideline over there where the uh, lights are out. Yes, it is. The lights aren't as bad as I thought they were going to be earlier, um, but it, <laughs> it definitely makes a big difference on the field, I can guarantee it. Well, again, 132 to go in the half, and uh, we've seen a back-and-forth football game. Uh, Darren Green is uh, set to kick. Love Grimes deep to receive for the Panthers. And we've got a squib kick up the middle. Looks like number 20, uh, is that Vea? Yeah, it looks like Collecting Bea. that kick and uh, making good run back. They'll start at the 40-yard, their own 40-yard line, so with 123 to go. Play games will come and have uh, first and 10 from the 40. Yeah, now if I was here at Elizabeth Town here, I think I'd probably be a little more conservative at this point uh, and just try to keep the ball on the ground a little bit, almost kind of like what North Harden did. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think they want to give North Harden the ball even with, with 15 to 20 seconds left on the clock. A lot of big plays in the first half, and uh, 123 to go. We'll see what, uh, what they have. We're in the uh, traditional wing tee set, wing to the right. Belly, second belly to the right. Joe Becker is being swamped under. He tried to turn and make a big play and nothing doing. Well, I tell you what, I think Oxendine kind of set that play up uh, and, and really kind of stuffed it from the very beginning. And when you run that belly play, sometimes you get people biting on that first guy, and, and that's where the second back coming through can make a little run at it. Well, Oxendine and uh, Kai Hill there to make the play. Nothing doing on that, so it'll be second and ten. From their own 43-yard line, the Panthers, and the clock's running down to 50 seconds and a half. Becker in motion. Fake will run and waggle to left. There is a deep man up the left sideline on the, on the post corner route. Catch! Deep catch down the left side. And number three, Jamon Bristol coming up with a big grab for Elizabeth Town. And as soon as we thought they were about to run the clock out, deep ball uh, for about a 40-yard gain. Jamon Bristol, great throw. He had the corner beat on a post corner route on the waggle uh, pass. Timeout Panthers, they're going to talk it over uh, with just 36.9 seconds to go. They're down all the way to the 15-yard line of the Trojan. Uh, pretty big deal there. And I tell you what, uh, Clay Games was able to get his feet set, turn his shoulders, and make a nice, a nice pass there. And, uh, and, and, and really, I thought that either it was going to be a really good catch like it turned out to be, or we were going to get a pass, pass interference call. They had the uh, receiver, uh, Jamon Bristol, open, and so uh, good execution of the uh, waggle pass, and, and um, North Harden let, uh, let a receiver get behind him late in the half, and you hate to see that if you're the defensive coordinator. I'm sure they're having a conversation about that down on the field even now. And I thought that uh, Elizabeth Town was just going to kind of try to come run down here and try to run another play, and the clock was winding down on them, and they, you know, quickly uh, they are smart about it and called a timeout. It looks like uh, Elizabeth Town's going to try to put this thing in the end zone here, pull this momentum a little bit back in their direction before halftime. All right, first and 10 from the Trojan 15-yard line. We're in that we've got shotgun formation. Trips to the right, We're trying to seal off the right side. Long pass deep to Noah Peeler, overthrown out of the back of the end zone. So he's looking for big number eight, Noah Peeler, uh, in the corner. Yeah, and a really good job by Clay Games to throw that ball. Really, I think he was just, he, I don't know if he thought he had him or not, but he put it in a spot that only his guy could catch it. Um, so really good job, and the ball goes out of bounds, stopping the clock again for him. Well, they had a trips formation to the right, not to send out all the receivers, but so that Joe Becker and uh, Trajan Bradley could seal the edge, give Clay Games plenty of time to look down the field and look for his two receivers uh, in the route. Uh, second and 10 from the 15. Games coming to the line of scrimmage. He'll be under center here, double uh, uh, double wing, tight end right, Becker in motion. We're looking again back to the right side, slightly overthrown to Trajan Bradley, who was backpedaling on an out route. 
Yeah, and I don't think that uh, Trajan was ready for that. Clay kind of had to get rid of it a little quick. He had some pressure in his face and uh, really didn't have his feet set and just kind of uh, forearm through it uh, and, and just uh, kind of put it right over top of his head. Well, incomplete passes stop the clock, so that doesn't hurt the Panthers. They'll have one more crack at it here. Third and 10 from the 15, and they may be looking for a field goal if they can't pick up a big play here. Trips to the right. Becker to the left. Play game. Back to throw. He's looking up the left side. His receiver's not even looking for the football. Uh, they had trips right, Dan, and I think looking back to the left, a single coverage. Yeah, he sure was. And, um, you know, he looked like his receiver was there, but uh, he did not make the connection with him. And he looked like he was going back uh, there to, the, to number three, Jamon Bristol, with the, that had the prior catch. Fourth and uh, ten from the 15. Uh, I'm surprised we're not going to see uh, Brandon Parsons uh, for the field goal, but we don't. Uh, he missed his last extra point. Maybe Coach feels like he's got a better opportunity in the uh, passing game. All right, trips to the right. Becker lined very wide at the running back position. He's looking to protect the pass or play game. Game's looking deep over the top. Tut oh, my goodness. Completed pass, but out of bounds. Wow. I don't know if I had a very good angle on it, but it looked like he got his feet down, and it looked like the ref was looking at it for just a second and then started to wave it off. Well, I started to call touchdown because I saw the catch. Uh, he had. It looked like he had his feet down, but uh, he may have had his heels on the line, I don't know if he had his toes in first. That's hard to see from up here in the press box, but the official's going to say he's out of the back of the end zone. Well, I'd say it was a really, it was a really good attempt at it. Uh, really nice play, and again, he put the ball right there where only his receiver could get it. Well, with 7.8, you'd expect to see North Harden take a knee here and get into halftime up a touchdown. And that's what we'll see, Dan. Wow, well, what a first half! I tell you. Uh, I, didn't, I thought it was going to be really one-sided, and we got a really nice first half out of both teams there. Well, we'll see what kind of steam the Panthers have when we come back out uh, for the second half. Trojans lead here 20-13 to 13 at the half. This is HCEC-TV, a student production, a division of Hardin County Schools. And we'll be back after halftime. I think that is Cam Cam McNeil. I was looking at Enterprise called it. The lights from the south side. Turn Coca-Cola products into cash for the students of Hardin County Schools. Visit coke.com slash give slash schools on your computer or smartphone. Tap scan code. Scan the code with your camera or enter it manually. When you are finished, click Submit. Help the Hardin County Schools by just scanning your Coca-Cola products. It's as easy as one, two, three. It's important to build a relationship with the students and with the parents. I call each one of them by name in the morning when they get on, I call them by name. Each afternoon when they get off, I call them by name. You have patience to be with students. It, it's a very rewarding job. You know, I, I, I wish that I'd started earlier than I did, but now that I've got 19 years in, I look back and I think, man, it, it's been great. They all have been a blessing in my life. I just enjoy working with the kids and seeing them every day and making them smile and, you know, being a part of their day. You get to maybe change somebody's life. 
it makes me feel good because, you know, maybe not, I'm the reason they want to come to school sometimes, that they get that meal and they're able to focus on school better. I love working with the students. As an instructional assistant, I think one of the most rewarding things is you get more one-on-one -on -one time with the students. One of my favorite stories was my a fifth grade boy that I was working with all year. He had never completed one book and we started reading this one book. And the last day of school, all these kids were out there playing and doing their field day activities. And he come to, up to me and he said, "Miss Miller, can we please finish that book? I don't wanna graduate from Lakewood and not ever have finished reading a book. And he did. And to this day, we still keep track of each other. And I think he's a junior in high school now and he's doing really well. Saw the job opening for a custodian at North Harden High School and applied there and um, been with Harden County Schools ever since came from the high school to the elementary, middle view elementary, and when I'm sitting in the lobby, this girl had come down from one of the ramps, and she had pink tails, she was probably first grade, and her front teeth were missing, and she smiled and waved at me, and I thought, wow, I'm gonna love working here. Uh, the kids, always a smile on their face, always um, nice, always just really bright in your day. And I really don't have any complaints about my job. I love my job. I love working for Hardin County Schools. Um, probably one of the best jobs I've ever had, actually. I live in Jefferson County. I am driving 35 minutes to come to Lincoln Trail. Uh, I did teach in Jefferson County one year. I just decided that Hardin County was a better fit. Fell in love my first year and just decided to stay in Hardin County School District. Just seeing that moment, that aha moment, when they click, it's like, oh my gosh, you got it. And it's like, wow, <laughs> I love it. Teachers here do whatever it takes to help each kid. So, and I love that. Of course, I've been here at MetaView my whole 25 years. Most of the time it's successes, whether it's with a relationship and a child coming a far long way with just their confidence or if they've come a long way academically. So it's very rewarding, very rewarding, and you see highlights every single day. I'm a substitute teacher, but I'm in school to be an elementary teacher, so subbing kind of worked out with my schedule better. I've always loved working with kids. I feel like that's just my passion is working with kids from coaching to teaching. I just feel like I can have a huge impact on, you know, just kids' lives and their future. Well, I chose Hardin County because I went to school, I went to Central and East Hardin, and I just love it. I love all the people, you know, I know people at pretty much every school in the district. And I just, I love the environment. Every school I've been to is amazing. The people are friendly and accepting, and I just love the, cold, the environment of it. <laughs> it was just a miraculous decision. I did not realize it was going to be my calling that I have just grown to absolutely love it. Just give, to show them the love that we care, we are here for them no matter what the situation is, just to help them grow. You just don't want to miss a day in their lives. Being a self-employed uh, realtor, finding health care coverage was a really difficult thing, especially affordable health care coverage, and that's why I started doing the bus driving. Being around the kids, being in the school atmosphere, uh, getting to interact with them is, is a real joy to me. I see potential in kids and I want to help them reach that potential. I love this school. <laughs> the community that I feel here um, with my colleagues and the students that I get to work with every day, I think that we are all, we have a momentum going and it's growing um, to really build a positive culture here and to have a sense of community and to be proud. That to me is exciting and it's it adds the fun into why you become a teacher. I think that teachers are excited to be a part of a district that does that for its students, and I think it excites students. I went into the teaching profession because I knew I was gonna make a difference in kids' lives, knowing that every morning when I come into work, my kids are gonna hug me, and when they leave at the end of the day, they're gonna say, I don't wanna leave, and that's, that's why I teach. I think the biggest thing that I learned growing up was building family relationships, especially in a school like this where there are so many different family dynamics. It's so important to know your kids and know what they need, you know, what they might be going through at home. I'm going to be here for them every day, I think is, is comforting for them. When I retired, I couldn't sit around the house. I decided I became a driver. January the 13th of this past year. Well, I'm a diabetic. I lost my leg. State of Kentucky, I cannot drive a school bus. They take care of you. They offer me a job. They said, why don't you be a monitor? I said, I'd love to be a monitor. As soon as they came out of school, saw me, they hollered at me, hey, Mr. Lark, Mr. Lark, and they came running up and hugging me. That makes you feel great. You've made a difference. Probably in some of them's lives, you made a big difference. I taught at the biggest district in um, Atlanta, 
and I love it here because it's smaller, everybody knows everybody. I feel like it's a family. My purpose is to serve my community, and it means so much to me because I'm from Radcliffe. Yesterday was a moment for me. A student had, he had a, a breakdown. You know, he was in a ball, he was really upset. I told him to put his arms around. I said, I love you, I'm not mad at you, because he called me a couple names <laughs> before I got to him. And he finally, he just put his arms around my neck, and he would not let go. I rode the bus with him the whole ride home. I just felt everything he was feeling put on me, and, I, and that just really solidified why I'm here. Every kid in this school is our kid. If they are in this school, they're our kid. When I first started working, I was 58, and my kid said, Mom, nobody's going to hire you because you don't have experience. I said, I've raised five kids and 72 foster kids. I said, I think I qualify. You can come in here with a sad face, and you look at them children, and they just like make you smile. All the teachers, my coworkers, they're great. You know, and the kids will say, you're going to retire and enjoy your life. I said, I'm enjoying my life right now. And I've already told Miss Carrie I was staying until I was 75. <laughs> you know, you got to love your job, and I do. I can't help it. Ladies and gentlemen, the storm that came through the area before the game tonight has damaged the stadium lights on the south side of the field. The officials have determined that there is not enough light to continue. The game will be postponed until tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Once again, the storm that came through the area before the game tonight has damaged the stadium lights on the south side of the field and the officials have determined that there is not enough light to continue. The game has been postponed until 6 p.m. tomorrow night. There will be no admission for tomorrow night. Welcome back to Ray Story Field here at North Harden High School. 
We've got some interesting news for you here. Again, Paul Gray alongside Dan Robbins. Dan, uh, share with our audience what's going on here at Ray Story Field. Yeah, so, you know, we've talked about it a little bit during our broadcast that uh, the lights were out on the south side of the field. And uh, we kind of just joked about it a little bit, but the officials have determined that there is not enough light to safely continue the game at this time. So they have postponed it, and they will try again tomorrow night at 6 p.m., and, uh, and we'll, we'll play a second half. Well, we apologize to everybody. Uh, Hardin County Television, because of scheduling concerns with our production crew, with what we already have online uh, for our schedule, will not be able to carry the rest of that ball game. However, we've been informed – there is no admission cost for the game. You should come out here tomorrow night at 6 o'clock and see what has uh, turned out to be an amazing football game, Dan. Absolutely. I don't know what you have on tap for your Saturday night, but uh, if you're here in Radcliffe looking around for something good to do, uh, come out because it will be a fantastic atmosphere. If that first half is anything, uh, I think it's going to be a wonderful second half. Big plays, a uh, couple of long touchdown passes. Um, by Eric Moore, uh, one to his brother Josh Moore, uh, one to Camden Williams. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of big plays uh, from the uh, Panthers as well. And so uh, exciting first half of football, full of big plays. Um, I expect more of the same tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, don't know, I don't know why it, you would get anything less. Uh, and, and what you're going to get now is an opportunity that, that a lot of coaches don't have. You've got – some real time for some in-game uh, changes that you can put into place and you know be able to have some time tonight to go back and take a look at the first half of the film uh, make some adjustments um, it would be a really real big difference maker uh, for the second half. Dan how do players react in a situation like this how does this uh, affect their play and how they're uh, feeling as they come into the game tomorrow night? Well, you know, I think that there is a there, – there, you probably go through a mix of emotions. Uh, you're, pretty, you're pretty high right now on, on adrenaline um, playing this game. You've got a ch chance to rest. And then you kind of get a little let down. We're like, oh, man, because I really wanted to go out and finish this thing. Uh, so now you've you got to kind of get yourself back up again tomorrow night. But, you know, this crosstown rivalry that has re been revived now going into our fourth year, I don't think it will be hard for the kids to step up and be ready to play. Well, a lot of times I think in a situation like this, I know I've coached in four or five games where we had to come back another day uh, with lightning delays or any number of issues. And uh, the team that can come back with some excitement and energy often – will take the day you know are your kids going to sleep in and be listless uh, are your kids going to be on a you know on a schedule are they going to come out here and just be flat uh, you know whoever a lot of that's going to come down to the coaches but whoever can you know inspire their kids uh, to have a lot of energy and have a lot of fight uh, is going to have a great opportunity to win this game yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what the different approaches are from the, from the two staffs. You know, what, what do you do? You know, you go home, you, you let the kids go home, bring them back early, uh, show them some film. Um, it, who knows? You know, they, I'm sure they probably already kind of put some game plans together uh, to, to tackle this second half. But I think the key will be is who, who can make the biggest adjustments um, to come out tomorrow night and, and to finish this thing off. Well, again, we're, we're going to thank our sponsors before we go off the air here in just a minute. Uh, again, this is an HCEC TV student production, a division of Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, etownapartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, Etown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Tune in weekly for rebroadcasts of all local HCEC TV programs on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable Channel 2. Spectrum Communications on Channel 184. Special thanks to our HCEC TV crew, uh, all those students who are behind the cameras, who are in the trucks working really hard to bring you this great football action, especially tonight with some great football. Let us remind you at this time, uh, for myself, Paul Gray, and Dan Robbins, that the uh, game has been deemed uh, unplayable because of a lack of light. Uh, two uh, sets of lights are out on the south side of the football field. The officials have said it's too dark to continue. And uh, the game will resume tomorrow evening here at Ray Story Field at 6 o'clock in the evening. So, again, no uh, admission is free for tomorrow evening. Come back out and support your local uh, athletes um, for a great uh, second half of football. Yeah, I, I kind of wonder, Paul, because this weather has played a little bit of havoc. I've, I've just been checking our Twitter feed, and it uh, looks like that the Central Harden game against Christian Academy of Louisville, who is Elizabethtown's opponent uh, next week, uh, that that game has not started yet. And looking at a 930 kickoff at this point, and, you know, they maybe get to a, to a good point where they're going to have to call it as well. And uh, it's just gotten too late to start. 
Sounds like a weekend of football, not just a Friday night of football uh, in the area here uh, this week. Thanks to Dan Robbins, myself, Paul Gray, the whole crew. Uh, we're going to say good evening to you and hope you'll come out and enjoy some football here tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock at Ray Story Field. Good night.